It's just around midnight, and we are uh, a little to the west of... I don't remember their name. Their household with all their animals that have unfortunately been getting slaughtered. Nothing's happening so far. It's very quiet. So I think what I'm probably going to have to do is just uh, hang out here and wait a little bit, and Boone is trying to be quiet. Good for you, Boone. Maybe we'll find out what, or who, or when, or where, or why the Chupacabra is. There it is right there. I see it. I see it. Do you see the Chupacabra? I see the Chupacabra. Let's go talk to it because, eh, you know, whatever. It's cool. Hi. Tonight, Ken. How you doing? I mean, I'm, I'm kind of ready to just open fire on you. But I'm going to wait a second. Just because I'm a nice guy. I mean, it's going to open up with... Uh, I'm assuming a minigun based on the description we had from No Bark Noonan. Uh, you've got issues there, buddy. And you just totally wrecked a guy. Alright, um... Well, let's do it. Oh, that was a bad idea. Okay. Oh, uh, thanks, everyone. I don't know what happened. Dude just got wrecked. Uh, unfortunately... They did lose another animal because I waited. The Screams of Brahmin. Sure, we'll take all the the stuff from you because um, uh, you don't need it. Hi. I want to ask you to carry this stupid thing for me. So let me give you this weapon. You're going to get the minigun. And uh, I guess we're just going to have to call that good enough for now. I mean, could have killed it before it decided to, you know, open fire on things. But mm, I don't know. Most of what is recorded here is a mess of incomprehensible psychotic gibberish. It seems to express a general frustration towards a set of Brahmin who are allegedly keeping the author awake at night by screaming inside his head whenever he closes his eyes. Well, sorry about your Brahmin. You still have to with any luck. Um, they are different genders and you'll be able to have more, I guess. I don't know. I mean, I wasn't sure if you could do things in a way where... Uh, Look, let's here. see. You. What brings you here? Um, nope. Nice. Where's Where's your husband? Where's Dusty? Find anything? No one is going to attack your corral from now on. Well, I don't know how you've done it, but I do know how I can thank you. Please take this. Compliments of Alice and myself. And help yourself to anything in that freezer over yonder. We got more steaks in there than we'd be able to eat in a year. All right. Thanks for the 75 so bottle caps and your trust that I actually told you what happened was legit. Wow, you do have a bunch of steaks. You can't eat 10 steaks in a year. Wow. Just saying. Uh, Eddie, you got to move, buddy. So we have basically kind of done everything we need to do in Novak, I believe. I think we've we've taken care of almost everything. There might be one thing that we can still do here that we're not ready to do. And that's just assuming I even remember that correctly. So I think what we'll do is we'll kind of leave Novak and then let's take a look at our quest here because we can continue on with going to Boulder City to try to find the Great Cons and uh, whatever the dude's name is that shot us. We have that still going on. Tabitha's Reign of Terror. Most of the rest of this stuff is just kind of like, um, you know, we're going to we're going to get to it when we get to it or it's the DLC. So I guess we'll just go back to they went that away. There's a part of me that just kind of wants to wander around, but um, I'm okay with this right now. Actually, you know what we'll probably do? This will probably head north and go over to Helios 1 and stop there because I think that might be kind of fun to, to see what they've got going on out that way. So Helios 1 is going to be down the road this way. So here, let's maybe go back I don't know if this matters, if this keeps going. We'll just follow the road for a bit, and we'll stop over at Helios 1 and see if we can figure out any new stuff. You've done a good turn for the NCR, and now we'd like to do one for you. There's an NCR emergency two-way radio. You call, and we'll come running. Oh. You're not alone out here. The NCR has your back. Stay safe and good hunting. That's pretty nice of them. Dude just randomly tracked me down while I'm running over to uh, Helios 1. I mean, 
Probably could have waited till I got to Helios 1, but... No, that guy's a ranger. That's cool. I should tell you that I did stop off at the Gibson Scrapyard just to sell all of the gecko stuff that we took from all the geckos. And honestly, wasn't worth it. Got maybe 100 caps. I mean, 100 caps, you know, it's cool. Combine that with the 75 we got from the McBrides. Well, I can do the math. That's 175 caps. So here is Helios 1, which it looks like is still definitely operational. I mean, there is some power or something going on here because those, uh, I guess, I don't know if they're smokestacks or if they're more like steam stacks, but something's going on up there. And then check out this field of solar panels going on. I didn't know that solar panels were around in the retro 50s, but uh, I guess they were. I say the retro 50s because I mean like the retro future 50s. I just am lazy and not using all my words. This is Stay a mangy this dog. This is a restricted area. State your business. Um. Goodness. Um. Any sorts of things. I saw this in the distance and wanted to investigate. Or you're a legion spy trying to infiltrate our perimeter. Give me one good reason I should let you through. How about this two-way radio I have? I notice your solar tower isn't collecting much sunlight. I can help. No need. We already have an expert hard at work on it. Okay. And again, our expert is an idiot. Hell, he might as well be a saboteur. I guess you couldn't do any worse. Have him fill you in on the details. He's in the back of the building. You'll know him when you see him. Keeps his sunglasses on all the time, even when he's sleeping. Shouldn't there be more people defending this power plant? There should, but we're not getting much power out of it, so none of our enemies have big interest in it either. Not like Hoover Dam, anyway. We had a real fighting force here just long enough to take it from the Brotherhood of Steel. Then they got sent east to the dam like everybody else. Caesar's Legion sends skirmishers every so often, prodding for weaknesses mostly. The reality is, if they really wanted it, we'd all be dead. Why was the Brotherhood here? Damned if I know. Put up a hell of a fight, though. We had them outnumbered, I don't know, 20 to 1 maybe? They held out as long as they could, lost most of their force before they retreated. Gave us a little parting gift, too. They had some of the plant running, but they shut it all down. Enabled an old security system, too, to keep us away from the controls. <sighs> Jerk-offs. Why are you here and not on the front lines? Isn't that more important? I ask myself the same question all the time. But energy is hard to come by around here. Gives you more control over this area than troops ever could. Hell, if we lose the dam to the Legion, this little plant may be our last stand. All right, thanks. Later. So there's a lot to unpack here, and I want to look at this mangy dog that, um, I mean, I, I kind of feel like this poor dog needs, needs a meal here. Can I, can I do this? Can I just drop a Brahmin steak for you, Zelda style, and have you eat the steak? No. Okay. Well, I tried. Let the record reflect. I tried. Brotherhood of Steel is all about technology. That's kind of their thing, and uh, trying to recapture as much as they can. So in that vein, it makes sense that they would have been here at some point. And then there's the whole thing about Legion. Legion. Enclave, which I still haven't talked about. We'll, we'll get around to that at some point, maybe. Let's look at this terminal. Oh, there's all sorts of stuff in here. Can I tell him a Poseidon Energy publication for new employees? As a member of the Poseidon family, it will be natural for you to become enthusiastic about the incredible endeavors you'll be undertaking with us and want to tell others. But just a second there, my good man. Let's take a minute to consider what could happen if company information fell into the wrong hands and whose hands those might be. Can I tell my wife? Well, let's say you do. You tell her not to tell anyone. Your bond is sacred, but a woman's idle tongue is the devil's plaything. No sooner do you leave for work the next day than she's on the phone telling her best friend Candy. Then Candy tells Gertie. Gertie tells Maxine. Maxine tells Lulu. And while Lulu is telling Doris, a Chinese agent posing as an American operator listens in, and the next thing she's on the line with the Forbidden City, singing like a treasonous canary. The following day, you and your wife are bound in shackles and China is sitting at the controls of our entire arsenal. Can I tell my children? What father wouldn't want his kids to look up to him? Don't be that father. One day at school, Ivan Bullykov will get more than lunch money out of your kids. He will, he'll have national secrets. 
And while they're parading him through Red Square as a national hero, your children will be working in forced labor camps right next to you and your beautiful young wife, who's now wrinkled and homely since the communists have banned makeup because it expresses individuality. Can I tell my drinking buddies? Surely if there's somewhere safe a man can place his trust, it is with his other male friends. But how much do you really know about them? Are they friends or comrades? Don't be too sure, even the most transparent window can hide secrets when it's lined with iron curtains. Always remember, you are a member of two families now, and you have obligations to both. But your obligation to the Poseidon family is greater, because while your children may misbehave and your friends may change and your wife may nag and cheat on you, Poseidon energy will always be paying for and protecting your way of life. Don't tell anybody about anything about the projects of Poseidon Energy. When pressed, tell them your job is repetitive and not really worth discussing, but the company is nurturing and gives good benefits and is always looking for new talent. Oh boy, that was a mouthful. I'm gonna hope that my cat doesn't break things as she comes walking across the back of the GoXLR. Brigadier General Scott Lowe of the U.S. Army will be visiting the facility starting next Monday and staying on site indefinitely when Archimedes goes live. Keep moving. He'll be the only person here allowed to authorize its use for anything other than a test. Civilian employees are not required to salute, but it is expected of everyone that you observe through thorough grooming and hygiene regimens and dress neatly while the General is with us. The General expects the best from all his men and Poseidon men should be no different in the presence of such a fine and decorated soldier. The initial testing of Archimedes was a success, though not an unqualified one. Several minor systems were overloaded despite all precautions taken, and the two and a half minutes of downtime following the test is something we can work on improving. More importantly, we received reports from nearby facilities that they experienced system frying power fluctuations at the time of the test, notably the Black Mountain Communications Array and the military bunkers at Hidden Valley. We're going to make it a priority next time to prevent such collateral damage. On Tuesday, February 16th at 2 p.m., technicians will be running a test of Archimedes and its connectivity with our plant security system. Under no circumstances should any employee be outdoors on the plant grounds until the alarm klaxon has ceased and an all clear is given. We have death and dismemberment waivers from all employees on file and are not responsible for any accidents that should occur during this procedure. Protective eyewear is mandatory for all technicians observing from the tower deck. That was even more mouthfuls, and the reason we took our time to go through all of that is so that we can understand what in the crap is going on here and uh, what we're actually going to be doing. I'm just scooping up all this stuff that they have just left lying around for us, and I mean, thank you and all that. Appreciate that. We'll take all these things. Oh, I see more ammunition. My goodness, guys, thank you for all this ammo that we will probably never ever use. But it is appreciated. That looks like it almost could be something. Hi right, guys, how you doing? Brahmin steak in there. Are I mean, sure I kind of feel like I should take another us. steak. But um, we'll just leave the one in our inventory. We don't need to take another. Oh, there's some more. Oh. Yeah, no, I think we got the ammo. We didn't get the, the carton of cigarettes. We don't need them. We don't care about them. So that's the side door out of here. And then we'll kind of make our way through this place figure out what in the world Archimedes is and what we're doing with a solar array. I mean, the solar array portion is probably pretty obvious, but, uh, you know, uh, just the same here. Before we go into that way, maybe we'll go... Gosh, I don't know. Do we want to go upstairs first? Wow, that's a fresh apple. That's not even like a rancid, uh, I don't know, rotten, etc. apple. It's a fresh apple. That's very interesting. Eastern Reflector Control Terminal Password. Thank you for that. That was nice and easy to get a hold of that. And we just picked up an additional thing here. Data, miscellaneous, Eastern, uh, that's the terminal password. So that's quite the password. That would take a while to guess. And those are all the same things we have already seen. So we'll leave these guys and then here we'll just drop down. That'll be fine, we'll just do it that way. And then, let's see, that's where we looped around. So what I want to do now is go over to the other side here. And just see what we've got going on on this side. Probably should have started here. Yeah, but that's okay. 
We're authorized. We are personnel. We are only. So this is kind of the other side of... Kind of looks like the same room we were in before, but... I don't know that it actually is, but it looks like it maybe all connects to each other. Got a burned book there, some other things going on. Reading glasses, etc. Should probably look a little closer at some of these things just to see. Beer and all that stuff. Actually, let's talk to Eddie real quick just to see. Um, I'd like you to make some ammo. And let me access your multi-tools. Wow. I forgot that that you can do some of this sort of stuff on the road with. That's interesting. I mean, we can make a gecko hide belt. Could have made a golden gecko hide belt. I mean, maybe that's what we should have done. I don't know what the point is. Other than I think you use them for some other things. Maybe, uh, I don't know. There, There's something, I'm sure. Actually, this is probably something I should be paying attention to is weapon repair kits. Duct tape, scrap, electronic scrap metal, wonder glue, and wrenches. I mean, we can't make one, so it doesn't matter. I'm not going to worry about it going into the other menu. But if we get our repair up to 50, that might be worthwhile. So I think this maybe is the other room that we kind of had started to pop into. And then it looks like going over here is where we're going to find the resident genius of this facility who is busy at work repairing things to make everything work for the NCR. I'm doing a fine job by the looks of things not working right. So we have Ignacio Rivas. And fantastic. Who the hell are you? They bring you in to replace me? They're replacing me, aren't they? Uh, settle down. I'm not here to replace anyone. Why are you why are you worried about being replaced? Worried? Do I look worried to you? I've got this under control, baby. No one else can do what I do here. What job do you have here? What else? I'm in charge. This whole operation depends on me. No fantastic, no power. Got the whole NCR suckling my teats, and it feels so good. That's a weird thing to say. Uh, so what exactly do you do? Fuck, man. Everything. I push buttons, I turn dials, I read numbers. Sometimes I make up little stories in my head about what the numbers mean. Like one time I imagined they were a code to get into a vault full of naked women. Man, how cool would that be? So you have no idea what you're doing. No, man. I know exactly what I'm doing. I just don't know what effect it's going to have. Over there controls power in this building. That station has readouts on the computer network. That big knob there makes a crazy noise. Uh, sparks come out of that slot if you put stuff in it. And I'm learning more every day. Wow. So how did you get this job? It was easy, man. They were going door to door asking if anyone knew any scientists. I said look no further. They asked me if I knew anything about power plants. I said as much as anyone I had ever met. They asked me how well I understood theoretical physics. I said I had a theoretical degree in physics. They said welcome aboard. <laughs> so what are you trying to accomplish? Well, see, we're getting power because the guy running this place is fantastic but the mirrors outside aren't aimed right, so we're running at 1% efficiency, and I guess that just isn't good enough for some assholes. Trouble is, most of the controls for this place aren't here. They're in the tower, and that place has some crazy pre-war security system that the dumb shit NCR set off when they took over, killed two guys. Now they won't go near it. They want me to make an omelet, but I can't break any of their eggs. Know what I'm saying? So how would someone retarget the mirrors? There's these two terminals outside. They control the mirrors. I tried fooling with them, but didn't get very far. You'd have to get them to talk to the mainframe up in the tower, then do the rest from up there. I'm guessing, but it sounds good, right? Hey, you're not thinking about going up there, are you? I am now. Well, hey, if you find yourself up at the mainframe, do yourself a favor and make sure you send the power to the right place. It needs to go to the Strip and McCarran. Why should the power go to the strip in McCarran? Because I get paid, that's why. Per kilowatt hour. Whatever the hell that is. That's where the NCR wants the power, so that's where I want it. But you know, you do that, maybe I put in a good word for you with them. 
Fantastic's little helper. There's a reputation you can hang your hat on. Boy, oh boy. Here, this guy. You want this. It's the password to one of the terminals outside. Found it written on one of the stalls in the bathroom. So that gives us the Western Reflector Control Terminal password, and I think, was it the Eastern one that we found? Uh, Eastern one we found. Let's talk to Ignacio here. Ignacio, Ignacio. It's unusual to see a new face here. Are you a soldier or a scientist? Mm, more of a drifter. I see. Then you must have some special business here for them to have let you through. Um, hmm. They're looking for help getting this plant running. Interesting. Forgive me for prying, but I'm curious. Are you with a particular group? I kind of like this answer. This is your turf, for all I know. You could have me killed for my allegiance. Who are you with? Very well, yes. I'm part of the followers of the apocalypse. If you're not familiar, we seek peace and the spread of knowledge. Knowledge that must never be lost to the world. Now your turn. Um, geez, I do what's necessary to keep the peace. That's reassuring. Although many who've made that claim over the years have had less than pure intentions. But if it's really as you say, then take my advice. This installation carries with it dangers that no one here has realized. Take care of what you do here and who you listen to. Some things are best left buried with the old world. So what more is there to this place than a power plant? I don't entirely know. Our records on the company that built this place suggest that their dealings were not only in energy, but also in weapons. And I've seen equipment here marked with symbols used by the pre-war military. Targeting computers, shock sensors. A code word comes up repeatedly in the papers I've looked through here. Archimedes. I mean, I hope you read everything or listened to everything in between, because I lost it because my cat decided to mute the uh, system channel, but whatever. Uh, you think Archimedes is a weapon they build here? They built here. Yes, and the technology they have in this facility is like nothing I've seen. Some of it reminds me of Enclave equipment, but more advanced. A weapon based upon it would be catastrophic, no matter who claimed it. It's no wonder the Brotherhood wouldn't give it up. The Brotherhood of Steel knew about Archimedes? They weren't here for me to ask, but I doubt they were here for electricity. When the NCR first came here, it was under Brotherhood control. They usually steer clear of one another, but something here changed their minds. The Brotherhood's interest in pre-war technology has always been in weapons. It's likely they were trying to reclaim Archimedes when the NCR arrived. Now things are starting to make sense. So the NCR doesn't know about the weapon? Not yet. By some miracle, they've hired an imbecile to try and decipher the systems here. He spent months working at one console trying to get the solar reflectors to track the sun. What he doesn't know is that the only thing the console controls is the plant's intercom system. I tried to tell him, but he insisted that the largest console had to be the most important. Still, it's only a matter of time. I mean, it sounds like Mr. Uh, Fantastic needs to go away. Tell me more about the followers of the apocalypse. Humanity lost many things after the war. Methods of agriculture, techniques for survival. We took it upon ourselves to piece together this knowledge and bring it back to them. Go on. Other things weren't lost, but were blocked from our collective memory. Knowledge of what we're capable of and how things spiral out of control. It's in our nature to want to forget truths that keep us awake at night. And for that reason, it's all the more important that the followers walk the ways to remind people of them. So the NCR asked me to help increase the plant's power output. Then I would say do it. As long as the power of this plant is committed to the regional grid and not to a weapon, we are safe. If you're the one to restore output, then you can route the power where you choose, and they'll never be the wiser. I can't get you past the security in the tower, but I can be of some help. I've discovered a password for one of the mirror control terminals outside. You'll need it. Mm, where should I route this power? Oh, the NCR has their own designs for it, no doubt, but resist the urge to send it only to the thriving communities. The need for power is great everywhere. Distributing it evenly is the most rational and humane choice. And why would you trust me with this? I'm a man of letters. I'd be torn to pieces by the security system they have in that tower. I'd never reach the mainframe. But eventually, the NCR will. Or if not them, Caesar's Legion. They will use this place for war. Because the possibility exists, you might do anything else. You're the only choice I have. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye.
Now we already have both of the passwords, so he didn't actually give us one there. But I think, wow, man, there's a there's been a lot of talking in this episode, hasn't there? Both uh, by people and by me, because I'm not a people. So we're in the Helios One backyard, and I just kind of want to take a moment to wander around through here before we do anything else, just to see. I mean, you got all these solar panels. This is kind of crazy. I mean, these huge array, this huge array of panels. I mean, it's just panels, panels, panels. And you can see that uh, there's definitely a big tower over here. Question is, what are we going to do with everything once we get everything up and running? Because believe you me, we are going to get everything up and running. That is 100% my intention. I don't know that we'll be able to do it right away. I'm not sure if we're smart enough. I mean, clearly we're smarter than fantastic, but I don't know if we're at the point where we have everything we need to be configuring all of this stuff correctly. That I'm really not sure about. I think we can go in through here, right? So that's the solar collection tower, but I did want to run over here just because I see some peeps. Wow, yeah. Sleeping with your hand on the trigger, basically your finger on the trigger. That's the way to do it. Holy crap, dude. That is something, isn't it? That seems really dangerous to me, but I don't know. What do I know? Hey, look at this free ammo box. And no one is going to mind if we take all the stuff from it. Yoink and yoink. We still have a little bit of inventory that I'm not sure what to do with, so we'll have to get rid of that at some point here. Uh, let's just pop in right quick to see what we're dealing with, because honestly I don't remember. I think what it might end up being is... I'm not sure how Boone got injured, too. We might end up dealing with robots. That's my hunch. I'm just trying to look around here and figure out what there might be. Uh, looks like turrets. Okay. I don't even see what's firing. Oh, no. Eddie's unconscious. You unconscious to Eddie. That's not cool, man. Okay, that guy's toast. Mr. Gutsy. Uh, Boone. I mean, I would kind of appreciate it if you didn't walk in front of me, but, you know. That's cool and all. You do you. Eddie will be back soon. Eddie just needs a moment to, to kind of recharge, and then Eddie will be fine. Oh my gosh. Here, let's take the energy cells here, and we'll just kind of do a quick sweep of this upper floor, which it looks like... That's going to take us lower into this place. Okay. That's most of the things we write, we need right there for a weapon repair kit, but don't really have a way to make those just yet. As, as I said earlier, we're not quite there yet. So I think what we'll do is we'll save the conversation for the Enclave as the next episode. We'll see if that actually happens. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not intentionally trying to turn it into a thing, but it's kind of turning into a thing. And... Okay, you are playing some music. That means you have found someone nearby. So here, let's go loot this guy real quick. We'll loot Mr. Gutsy. Lots of flame refuel. That's great. That that actually worked out pretty well. And then we'll just take a peek in here because... Okay, oh yeah, there's a locked safe. Let's go ahead and get this guy open. I can't seem to end the episode. I said I was going to, and then I kept playing. What's wrong with me, man? Yes, 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 yes. Because all those pulse weapons, the pulse grenades, the pulse mines, pulse pulse, are going to be very good against the robots. They're going to do additional damage against them, basically, or better damage, I don't know, something. So eyeglasses, okay. I feel like we have done everything we need to in here. We'll pick up on the next one as we go through this place proper-like, and see if we can fix Helios 1, and then we're going to have ourselves a decision to make. What do we do? With all the power, we are going to start generating thanks to the power of the sun. Catch you next one, Tolan. Thanks for watching. See you later.